right, so today we're going to be talking about Y-line uh, bunker spoon trolling. So basically brought a couple rigs that I like to use and talk about everything and what we do and stuff like that. So for starters, the most important thing you want to use is the rod. By far, this is your most important tool right here. A lot of people just use like, like a seeker, like um, is it the, uh, I forget the model, but whatever, it's like a seven foot blank. It's not gonna work the spoon. So you want all that actions in the rod. So basically you wanna get yourself a decent rod to start it up. And all, the, the rod tells a story. Everything's gonna be in the tip. So, let's go. Yeah. You wanna hold that for a second? Thanks. So basically when you start trolling, you know, everything's gonna be in there. So you're gonna watch, you know, you can see there's a nice spongy rod. There's two rods I use. This one right here is a Tony Maja, spongy. You know, you see everything right through that rod. Then I have one that's a little bit stiffer, but it's soft in the tip, so it gives more like a snap action. So it'll work both spoons a little differently. This one just gonna be that real smooth pump. This is what you wanna see when you're trolling. There's a nice, steady pump on the spoon. <clears throat> this one I believe is an eight footer. Yeah, it's eight footer. Now when you're trolling, you know, you pick what you want, where the bait is. If the bunk is around, I like to use this spoon. I modify them a little bit. You can say add a treble to that. And uh, I'll pass it around so you guys don't get hooked. What you could do is that owner makes these little beads. I don't know if you could see that. There's a little bead on there and that will help us so the hook doesn't slide off. Then you could add some reflective tapes and stuff or you could dig them out with rattles, whatever. So you could see, just be careful those hooks they show them. <clears throat> when you're trolling, if you're trolling two rods, Always use the same spoons. Don't mix and match. So if I'm trolling that size four, I don't want to troll this with it because they're different actions, so different speeds. So you want to use the same spoon. So these two, these will go together. If there's herring around or smaller bait, I want to use the smaller spoons. These two will go out. And you can see I put the trebles on these two. What's that? Mixing colors. Yeah, mixing colors are good. If you see that they're all hitting on the green, go both green. You know, if you see both white, then go to that. If it's just, you know, whatever, mixing up, they don't matter. But it will happen when you see them hitting more on one spoon than the other. Okay. I don't know if you notice that the fish now seem to be a lot deeper. They're really not in that lower water. It seems like it's always over 30 feet of water. So with the wire, it's uh, 300 feet. It's going to get you down 30 feet, let's say. <clears throat> if you have to go deeper, I use this rig right here I made. This is, takes a little bit more effort, because what this is, you can see from my tangle before, that right there is 18 to 20 feet of line. And then we have, this is a Mojo rig. You can get these Bass Pro Shops, any stores like that. I haven't seen much around here, but mostly like in the Virginia stores, Delaware, <clears throat> they sell this stuff. So to that tip right here, to my snap swivel, I'm gonna put this three-way. This right here is a small one, this one's about eight to 10 ounces, every four ounces of lead is gonna get you down approximately five more feet in the water. So say this is eight, that's 10 more feet. I'm gonna go down. So now my 300 feet is actually gonna get me down 40 feet of water because of this extra added weight. And the reason why I use so much extra line is it doesn't uh, change the action of the spoon. The spoon's still gonna work the same with this extra line. The only problem is when you're doing this is you basically need two people because now you pull this to the tip of your rod, you got fish are still 20 feet away. So someone's basically gonna have to hand line it in, or if you got a big enough boat, maybe you could walk to the front and have a net or you know, a gaff guy in the back, but you're probably gonna have to use two people. But it works, and it definitely gets the line down a lot deeper where you need it to be. Also, when using wire, you guys all wire fish before, right? You ever tried? It really hurts your arm a lot, right? If your arm gets dead, it's like when you're done, one arm's this big. So just pick up one of these cheap little belts. This is any tackle store. They're probably like $20, $30, but it saves a day. You can also get them at West Marine sometimes. They go on sale and they'll charge like 15 bucks. So it's definitely a good piece to have. It saves a day, that's for sure. <clears throat> when, it's, when I troll, a lot of times you want to do is like, it depends on where the current is. I like to cross current, you know, so if, you know, if I'll go like north-south, let's just say, if the current's coming east, and that seems to work a lot better. So, you know, go like a zigzag, come this way back, north, south, north, south, west, east. Depends which way it's going. <clears throat> if you go with the current, you have to adjust your speeds then. Of course, if it's pushing you, you don't use as much throttle. 
you know, come back. If it's pushing too much, you might have to go a little more throttle to get that spoon to work. Just keep watching the tip of that rod. Like I said, it's the story. It tells you what you got to do. And, um, you know, if it's not bouncing, the spoon's not working, it's not going to catch anything. You definitely got to go, you know, watch that tip, make sure you get that bounce, whatever. Another thing you could do, is if I have one in here somewhere, is use drail weights or trolling weights. Everyone knows what these are, right? Again, this is eight ounces. So what I could do is put this to the tip here. And now I'm going to get another 10 feet of line. I mean, a 10 feet of depth out. So that, and then I'll put 15 foot of leader to here, and then a spoon on that. And that's going to get you that extra 10 feet you need. If you need more, you can go even heavier. Tony offers his keel weights. He makes them a little bigger. I think this is the small one. And then he makes the bigger one, which I have to find somewhere in here. So here's a bigger one. This one is uh, 16 ounces. So that's really gonna get me down if I'm really, really deep water. But at that point, I'm probably in federal water, so that's not too good. Here's the bigger weight. You can see it's much, much bigger weight that you could put on and add more weight to the spoon. A lot of times with those mojo rigs, you can add one of these on the back just to rub a fish. A lot of times this will catch the fish above the spoon. You know, it all depends what's out there. Here's a bigger one. This one, I believe, is a 20 ounce mojo rig. But that with the spoon, it's, it's pretty deadly. We have a video up and you can see it in use and how it works and everything like that on our webpage. But for deeper water, I mean, you can't go wrong with these. And the spoon, it doesn't change the action spoon, everything works fine. Just get that, that line, though. You definitely need that 20 feet of line. Because if you go short, you're going to ruin the action of the spoon. And everything's pre-tied. So that's, that's 80 pounds, 20 feet right there. So that would go on the end of this. And then to the spoon. And that's it. And it's done. What else you could use is, let's see if I can find them in here. Oops. Another rig you could do also is use a spoon, another small spoon. Anyone have seen these? These are like the pet spoons and stuff. You want that and the same action. This goes a thing and then this goes out. So you have the spoon, on the big spoon working, and then a small spoon at the same time. You use something like that. Or you could also use this with uh, the diving plugs work really good. This with a diving plug works fantastic. So we have the diving plug on. And we have one that What's that? No, no, you can use both. So you basically, you know, you, it's like two different hooks. You can get two fish. So you have this onto here, you know, hook that up to there, and then this is going to be back a few feet. So this is swimming down, and this is trailing behind. This rig works really, really good, especially in the springtime. It works fantastic. This one's not too far. This one's maybe about eight feet. Yeah, yeah. So you can take a look at the rig. Just like I said, be careful with these hooks. Yeah, just a little spoon. But the two together work really good with a diving plug. And this, of course, would be on the other one right there. So this is working, and that spoon's going to be, you know, both of them are fluttering like this at the same time, coming, coming, coming. And you'd be shocked, you know, you get double headers constantly. I like basically, the, I don't know if I have any, the black or the blues. The black body, that's a good one. The blue's good. And these you get, again, like a lot of stuff I buy, it's either I go to, you know, I'll be at Bass Pro Shop somewhere or a store and I see them on sale. These were on sale actually at Walmart. I bought four of them. They were $7 a piece. It's like a $30 plug. <laughs> I was like, oh, I grabbed them all. Yeah. So basically, let's talk about the setup then. <clears throat> when you're going to start trolling, you don't, especially if you do two rods, if you're doing one rod, it's not as, it doesn't really matter as much. But if you're doing two rods, you really should have someone on the wheel. Because as you're letting out the lines, if you start spinning and turning, this wire is going to cross, and once it crosses, it's over. You know, it gets all tangled up. Usually it's kinked and it's garbage, and you have to go out and buy some new wire. So basically, if you go with two people, you know, or, you know two people on the rods, or if one person's on the wheel and, and one guy lets out the rod, you're better off that way, and then someone can keep the boat straight. If you don't keep it straight, it's, I've seen it happen so many times, 
It's going to get tangled. It's going to ruin the day. And it's, if you could save the wire, great. Majority of times, you're not going to save the wire. So set it out. So let's say you're marking the fish at 30 feet right now. You're, say you're in 40 feet of water, marking the fish at 30 feet. You want to get that spoon down 30 feet. But don't always be fooled that it has to be down at 30 feet. Everybody says bass on the bottom, bass on the bottom. A lot of times, they might be hovering up higher on bait, and they'll be 20 feet down. Now, if you see those fish 20 feet, you don't want to put out 300 feet of wire because now you're below them. So let out 200 feet of wire. So now your lure is approximately at that 20 foot and so on. Now, you, you, if you're marking those fish on the depth finder or the fish finder, you know where you got to be. So you do that and, you know, see what you hook up. If not, you whatever. Also, when you're trolling on your turns, when you turn your boat, let's say you're going to the left, your, your port bait is going to go down deeper now and your starboard's going to go up higher. If you see you're getting hits on the starboard, let's say your lure's got to come up. You know, because every time you make that turn, that's going to come up and vice versa on the other side. So that's another way to tell where those fish are and where they're hanging. You definitely want to look for bait. If you want to find bait, if you can't find bait, structure. Always troll around structure. But now with structure, don't go too deep because if you get snagged up, if you're in 30 feet of water and structure comes up, 10 feet, basically set your lines for 20 feet of water. Because if not, you're going to snag the bottom. And again, your day's going to be ruined. And I've seen that happen a lot, tons of times. But now, if you want, like speed, speeds vary. A good start is three, three miles an hour is a good start in speed. Uh, depends on currents, wind, all that, you know, plays a big role in it. But I like to start at three, sometimes go to three and a half, and just again, watching the tip of that rod. I have a video, but I don't have it set up, I could show you. <clears throat> but, you know, if you see that the, the rod is just limp, nothing, it's no good. You really want to, oops, you really want to see that, you know, that whole pounding thing. And you know your spoon's working good, and you adjust your speed accordingly, whatever you have to do to get to that. Again, the belts, two rods. If you get a fish on and you have two rods out, you really want to reel both rods in. Even though it's a pain in the butt to do it, get the other one in because you're going to snag bottom. You're going to get weed on it, and then it's useless anyway. So definitely you got to reel in the two. And it's a team effort between the trolling is more or less two people. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Definitely can't do it one. It's a lot of work to do it one. But also now, right, guys, a lot of guys are catching threshers now, if you saw that on the spoons. I had one last year, two last year. One I lost, one I boated on these spoons and the threshers are coming up and they, you know, this thing's swimming in there, whacking it with their tails and you're getting threshers on bunker spoons, which is crazy. You're landing them on these little tiny hooks, but you know, it's happening, it's all your drag. And speaking of drag, you don't want to lock it up. A lot of times people say they lock up their wire and you know, that, there's no stretching wire at all. So when that fish hits, a lot of times you're gonna rip it right out of its mouth. So you definitely want to do a little bit of a softer drag and then if you have to, you can come up once the fish is on, come up a little, plus it's harder to pull it out of the outrider which I wish I had here today, but I don't. <clears throat> so speaking about outrodders, when I troll, a lot of people you'll see will keep it in a rod rack like this. I don't like that. Everybody knows what outrodders are. Get, get a set of those. It's so worth the money. You get your rod like this, keeps it lower to the water, gets the line down a little deeper, and it's much better. You can see the action of your rod, and it also separates your spoons a lot further. So if this is eight and that's eight, that's 16 feet plus whatever the beam of your boat is, everything's much further separated. Sorry, I talk fast. That's my Long Island. I talk really fast. <laughs> if you have any questions, you can ask any questions. So now we're trolling. Um, we hook up, obviously. We take both lines in. Oh, thanks. We get both lines in. You get your fish. If you're going to release the fish, you really don't even have to net it. You can lip it if you want to net it. Don't handle it with a towel. You see that? When you handle anytime you touch that fish with a towel or something, you're taking its slime off. And that slime is just protective coat. And once you release that fish, that can start getting like all sorts of like parasites or disease where that slime is missing. So that's a protective coat. So you could use like a boga grip, which is ridiculously expensive, but they make cheaper ones. <clears throat> you could use that. You could lip the fish. You know, and they also have these hook out things, which again, I don't have on me. You just grab the line, you could pop the fish. You never even have to handle it if it's a smaller fish. You know, it saves a fish too, which is good. If you're going to keep them, net them, gaff them. Also, what you want to do is once you get a fish is bleed them because you get much better fillets at home. Just do a slice here, slice here, hang out. You can put it head first in a bucket of water and that's going to drain all the blood out or you can throw it in a cooler and then your ice gets all bloody. But that's another thing you could do. Oops, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, I'm trying to think what else there is now. Fillet and stuff like that. On these reels, you have your white, it's gonna be marked. So what I have is, I have, uh, I think, four colors. 
The first one is 100 feet. You're always gonna have 100 feet of line, because more or less you're not gonna be fishing in shallower than 10 feet of water. So the first mark's at 100 feet. So 100 feet of wire comes out, I know it's that. And then after that, it's every 50 feet I have it marked, and it's 300 feet of wire in here. And you put different colors so you know. You have like a red, a blue, green, and yellow, and you know where you're at. And the back on here, I have 80 pound Power Pro for that, and that'll help it get, instead of mono, again, once that, all that wire's in the water, now you have the Power Pro, so you can get it down even a little bit more to the, the, the bottom. A good temperature for bass, I'd like to say anywhere between 55 to 65 degrees, that's a good temperature. You can catch them in lower, you can catch them in higher, but those are, that's like the ideal temperature in that area, 55, 65 degrees is really good. And now also in the springtime, trolling wire really wasn't a thing in the spring. You know, back in the day, there was a fall thing only. Everybody waited for the fall run to get their wire out. Nowadays, the spring fishery is incredible with trolling. And there's actually a tournament held at a Bay Park Fishing Station that they do every uh, Memorial Day. And four out of the five that I placed in that tournament were all on spoons. One time was on a bunker chunk. And that's only because the water was filthy. And when the water's dirty, these don't work as good. You know, there's a lot of vibration, but that, when the water's filthy, you want to go with scent. So then you use your bunkers and stuff, heron, whatever, chum, <clears throat> whatever you have. And now it works. But majority of the time, you know, the spring really is a really good fishery right now. <clears throat> with the bunker spoons. I'd go out to either Debs, Jones, Rockway. Those are my three inlets that I use. Any of those three. Majority of people probably at Fire Island, Jones around here. Yeah. A good place also, if you want to start, there's like that 30 to 40 feet is really ideal starting. But again, don't be afraid to go into 20 feet of water. If you go deeper, you got to be careful. Watch that, the, the line of demarcation on your screens. Coast Guard's out there and they're getting people every day. I know a charter captain, <coughs> he was out Went see, uh, striped bass fishing first, had his limit, whatever it was, 12 stripers in the boat, went out to go sea bass fishing to finish off the day. Coast Guard came up, you got striped bass in the boat. You know, he's like, well, I was fishing in shore. You know, like, we don't care, it's possession. He got pinched, got a huge fine. I think it was something like $10,000 for the fish. And even though he didn't even fish from offshore, he was in shore, it doesn't matter, possession is the law, done. And uh, that kind of sucked and ruined his day pretty good. But it is what it is. I do, you can use umbrellas with the wire too. I mean, this base I was talking about, spoon today, but umbrella is exact same thing. Same speeds, same depth, everything's gonna be the same. Instead of using spoons, you'll have your umbrella rigs. <clears throat> I like the shad rigs, I love using shads. You know, all these, you know, swarm the colors. Bring a lot with you when you go, because if the blue fish around, they're gonna obviously destroy them, just a piece of rubber. But these work really good. These are a little bigger. These are my trailer ones. So my main, so say I do like an umbrella at arm. So it's a five. So I'll have the smaller ones, usually about like that big. And then I'll have the bigger one on the back on the trailer. And it's just a five, five uh, shad rig will be. So it'll be one, two, long in the middle, and then three, four, whatever, uh, four, five. But the, the trail is definitely go longer. Go like, you know, five feet, six feet, whatever. Get it back there, and you have your smaller ones up front. They work great. You know, there's a lot of new stuff today, too. And like, I have one in here. It's right here somewhere. Now, these, look at these laws now. I mean, it's all holographic. It's crazy. It looks just like a bunker. They work fantastic. But again, if blue's around, go with your spoons, go with your metal. You're going to lose less. You know, not as much is going to be chewed up and stuff like that. That makes you mess up much a lot better. <clears throat> if you see you start getting fish, right, just like fluke fishing, hit your man overboard, right? Now you know, start trolling around, start doing wide circles, go right back to where you hit that fish, because they could be sitting in that little area, and if you just keep trolling, 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 you leave that fish behind, you know? Spin around, go back, hit that man overboard, go directly where you caught that fish, and possibly you get another one, double, whatever. And actually, <laughs> last year, I took some clients out, and we, uh, they wanted to learn how to bunk spoon troll, teach them how to troll. We find a fish in about maybe 55 feet of water. We haven't had nothing, boom, we finally get like a 22 pound bass, hit the man overboard, come up a little deeper, spin around. As soon as I hit the numbers, the rod goes off, and the rod's screaming line, and we couldn't even get it out of the rod hole. The guy fights his fish, and it was a thresher, 225 thresher, in the exact spot where that bass was caught that we had. I mean, it's, you know, they're snagged in the tail and stuff. I mean, most of them are going to get a snagged in the tail if you get one. But you can land them on these. It's tough. It's fun, but it beats the crap out of you, <laughs> to be honest with you. And like I told you about trolling, you definitely got to troll the same spoons. You know, I, I like the Tony Maja spoons. They work great. They, 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 they mimic a bunker perfect. Wounded bunker looks like falling to the bottom. Just flutters, 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 and bam, you get the hit. They work super good. 
Definitely working around structures really good. If you get the tide, if the tide's coming, you know, let's say the tide's coming to the west, try fishing on that backside, see if you can pass that spoon along the backside, because the stripers are ambush. They could be waiting behind that rock, and here comes your spoon, and bang, they get it. <coughs> try to see what other stuff I have in here. You mentioned in Shad, right? Let's see if I have these small ones in here. Yeah, these are the size that I'll put. So these will be your main size right here. And then, ready? <laughs> That'll be your main size one, and then you go with the bigger ones behind it. And always keep the extras. You just pop the hook right in, and you go from there. And again, try to look for sales, too. When you see the stuff on sale, buy a whole bunch of it, because sometimes the sales are really, really good. You, can, you load up, and if you're losing them, it doesn't matter. You, you know, you have so many. Another thing, what I like to do is, um, I, I always have bunker on a boat. It's good to keep bunker always with you. If you're trolling, you get a fish on, you could flip a bunker out there. Because a lot of times bass will follow the other bass up. So now you're fighting a fish, you got one on, and there's this bunker just sitting there. Don't be surprised that rod bends over and now you got it doubled up. Again, though, it's tough to do with one person, you need a couple people on the boat to make it happen. But, you know, it, it happens, and it, it happens more often than you think. And you'll see them following. How many times do you like a lot of jiggers in here? When you're jigging, right? You're jigging, jigging, you get a fish, you pull up, there's five, six behind that fish on the jig. So if you have a bait just sitting in that water, they're going to hit it. They always hit it. You know, it's, if they're up, they're going to get it. <clears throat> Try to think what else, what else? Again, sharp hooks, just like Tom was saying, always keep a file. If your hooks bend, always keep a ply is what you do. Because a lot of times your, your trebles will bend, these all look pretty good. These will start bending out, just bring it right back, make sure everything's good, always check your hook. Check your spoons when you're trolling. If you're not getting anything, check your spoons. It's so easy, you can pick up weed, you can pick up a starfish. If you hit the bottom real quick, you catch a starfish or something on your line, that happens a lot. Always, always check your spoons. You know, for the little effort it takes to reel it in, it's worth it because if you don't know, you know, if that's not working, something's going on, if that spoon's not working properly. Adjust your speeds if you have to cross current with the current, always, it's, it's, it's constantly working. You know, you're not just sitting there throwing your lines in the water and just cracking a beer hanging out. You constantly gotta watch the rod, watch the speed, and see what's going on. If someone else is catching a lot of fish next to you, why is that guy catching a fish? You're both trolling metal, why is, you know, someone else catch fish? Try to figure out what's going on. Is his spoon's higher, is his spoon's lower? Is it a different color that he has on? You know, see what's going on, why someone will be catching more. When it comes to outfits, definitely want to sell, you know, an eight foot spongy rod. Most people uh, fish 4.0 Senators, which is a great reel. They have the, the, uh, the stainless tool, so you don't get that corrosion. If you're not using that, wash these. And what I do every year is, is a, I'll go like to a piece of property, and there's a fence, and I'll hook that onto the fence, and I'll walk this whole thing out, 300 feet. And then what I'll do is I'll get a rag with some WD-40, pop it on there, here, and I'll just reel in the whole thing and clean all that wire. And you can see all the crap that comes off that wire and stuff. If you keep your wire, you know, it's, it's going to last if you can keep it. If not, if it's getting kinked and stuff, change it because you're going to lose the spoons. <clears throat> These things are like $30 a piece, and it stinks when you lose them, but it happens. Sometimes the wire, uh, I've seen like, it, it's a rare thing. You'll see there's like little black dots in the wire. If you see that, get rid of it because it's like all frail now. And the, the wire will just pop out of nowhere. You'll just be letting out the line, all of a sudden the wire parts. I don't know if it happened to any of these at all, but you'll see that. Just out of nowhere, it just happens. Get rid of the wire. If something happens, I don't know if it's... A defect when they made it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but you see like, little black dots on the line. It's garbage. Throw it out. Get fresh wire. I like to use 40 to 50 pound test wire. That's the best. 50 is probably my favorite. I feel it gets the lures down even a little bit deeper than that because it's more dense, heavier wire. I think it gets it down. I could be wrong because there is more drag, but I feel it gets it uh, down deeper. Plus, you can put a little more heat on it if you have to. I like stainless. Manel's doubly uh, the cost, and it's the same thing. It's softer wire, but if you take care of your wire, you don't need it. It's literally double the cost of stainless steel. So if that costs, say, $40 to fill, the Manel will cost you like $70, whatever. It's like so much, so much more money, it's ridiculous. You don't need, to, you don't need it. If you want it, you can get it, but it's, just, it's a much softer wire. What about the I'm not sure about the lead core. Like my buddy Ralph here, his friend fishes up in the north for now, and that's all he uses, the lead core, and he loves it, and he catches a lot of big, big fish on it. I don't use it. Oh, he uses copper? Enlo uses bow. And people catch it. And now, like, I don't ever remember people bunker spooning on the North Shore. Now, that's big up there. They're doing it. We're actually going to do a video this year with his buddy up there on the North Shore trolling, and he's going to be using the lead core and also downriggers now. 
I'm going to get it set up this year. I'm new to it. I'll be learning. Never did it before. So I'm getting a downrigger this year to try it out. And supposedly the guys are having great success on the downriggers. So and it's the same thing, you know, let out your mono or, or whatever you have, your power pro, whatever, whatever you use. Probably, probably mono would be the best at that point. Get it out there, probably put it back, say, I don't know, let's say 100 feet, and then put it to your, your uh, downrigger ball and drop it down. You don't want it too close. You need that line so it works. Tony makes a system. He's got like a bungee cord system. I don't have any with me. And it's about maybe this piece, about that long. It's got a clip, goes to the downrigger ball, and now you got that extra sponge. So now that bungee cord is doing what this rod's doing. And all that is, you know, it's, again, it's that bounce, bounce. It's a little bit harder to see. I never did it, so I really can't talk about it. I don't know. I'm going to learn this year. But um, they're saying it's working. It's kicking butt. You know, I don't know if it's, it's I doubt any of the uh, action is going to come up onto the rod tip. It might because of that, the uh, bungee cord. So you might still be able to see it on the rod tip. I'm not sure. But I'm looking forward to doing it this year. But, yeah, lead core, any of that stuff. Is that what you use the lead? That's what I use. What's the depth? Same thing, like uh, 300 feet? Yeah, same as the wire. Doesn't change the average weight. Yeah, it's softer, and then there's a coating on it too, right? There's a coating. On. Yeah, whatever. It's like everybody's do, using Power Pro now, trolling. I can't, I'm so used to doing this. I've been doing this for years, and I'm so used to wire that I haven't gone over to the Power Pro. But people having success with that too. With the diving plugs, it works great. With the diving plugs, but people are doing the spoons now. But they're doing the same thing. They'll take an eight-ounce weight, they'll put it on there. The uh, the Power Pro is 10 feet less, so 300 feet they say is going to get you 20 feet down. So you throw an eight ounce weight on it, and now you're basically at that, that 300 feet, I mean, excuse me, the 30 feet for 300 feet. And they're, they're having success on it, and it's working, and you know, it's a lot easier fighting a fish on Power Pro than it is on stainless wire. Yeah, definitely, you get more action. Also with the rod, though, too, like if you're using a crappy rod, it, there's no fight, it's horrible, it's like reeling a tie. But if you use a rod that can absorb a lot of it, you do get more of a fight. Like if this rod's super spongy, you know, but whatever, any rod you wanna choose, but you definitely don't want a stiff rod. You definitely don't want those short rods. I proved it one day I was out with my buddy. We're fishing, and he's got the Seeker rod. It's like a seven foot. It's, a, it's a, an umbrella rig rod. That's what it is. <coughs> so we hit trolling, and my rod goes off. My rod goes off. He's like, switch the spoons. It's the spoons. I'm like, all right. So we switched the spoons. My rod goes off again. And finally, he's a believer. He took my rod. He goes, do you mind if I copy your rod? And it's a custom rod. It's another one I use. It's not a Tony Maja, but it's got a quick snap. So it's stiff in the rod, and it's got a loose tip. And what I feel it does is just like, I think it's whipping that spoon. Where this is a more subtle like this, that other rod's like snapping the spoon hard. He went and matched the rod, took it over to see how they made it for him. Works great, and now he's loving it, you know? And it's, the rod is everything. The rod is the most important tool there is to wireline trolling. I don't care what anybody says. <clears throat> Definitely 100% the wire rod. There's a billion spoons out there. These are my favorite. I love these spoons. I use them all the time. But it, the rod is what makes the spoon work. You could put the spoon on anything, but it's, it's, a, it's a pair, it's a marriage, you know? That's what's going to make it work, is that rod. I have a nine footer too. They're fine. Yeah, it's fine. They, yeah, I had a, what was it, I had a Seeker nine foot. The old, old bunker spoon rod, you know. Right. It works good. There's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. They work. Definitely the spongy is nice. You know, it, it shows that spoon a little bit slower. I have an original from back in the day. It must be from the 60s or 50s. Is a, a CL bunker spoon rod. And it's, you know, the old oak butt, whatever it is. The thing's got like three guides on it. <laughs> so when you're reeling a wipe, it's going to be a little rod. But it works. It's a spongy lamin glass blank. You know, and, and technology, all this new stuff, and it's coming out. And then, oh, also the guides. You've got to make sure you've got the right guides, the, the, the uh, carbolite guides. If you put wire to a regular Fuji guides or anything like that, it's going to cut it, and it's destroyed. It's gone. You need good guides for it. That's why rods are made specifically for the wire. But I mean, this show, like, you, I don't know if everybody walked through the show here. I'm sure there's plenty of rods you can get. There's all different ones. There's Tsunami. There's Tony Maja. There's, there's a whole bunch of different rods. I like this rod. Like I say, it's a spongy rod. It's also a pretty light rod. It doesn't weigh that much. It does a great job. I had a thresher on this one, too, uh, but I lost it. But again, you know, the rod handles it. And uh, that's everything. It's worth the money to get out there. Does the Tony Maja reel have a better retrieve ratio than the centimeter? This is faster, yeah. This is a faster retrieve. You know, this is definitely a faster one on here. I'll pull some line up. You can see, here, just hold that. I'll take a little line. So I met Tony at the New York Post show. Yeah. Okay, you can put up the lever drag on that. It's right inside, there you go. Now you'll see. See, it's going in pretty quick. I think it's yeah. six point something to one. That's what I think he said, yeah. 6.1. So what is the center, do you know? Uh, probably four, maybe even less, maybe, th what is it, about four, I think, right? So I think that's four. 
Yeah. Yeah. The red ones about one to one. one. <laughs> yeah. So the, the red one's four to one, and this is six to one. Yeah, there's an H on it. It'll be like a 113H. That's, what I use. That's the high speed one. Those are great reels. There's nothing wrong with those reels, and they last. There's nothing wrong with a Senator. I still have them. They're really well, good reels. Well, my senators <coughs> still last forever. Great reels. Great, great reels. There's nothing wrong with them. Sometimes go deeper. A lot of times, yeah, the bluefish are a pain in the butt, especially with wire. Oh, yeah. Biggest pain oh, in the ass there is. Really oh, no. Yeah. If they're that thick, you can move, go deeper, try to get below them. A lot, then the bass might be hanging on the bottom because if there's that many bluefish around and there's bait around, those bass are going to sit on the bottom. Like, why should I work? Let the bluefish do it. They're chewing up those bunkers. They're falling those heads down. And as that, that's falling to the bottom, they're just sitting there, oh, thank you. They're just picking away. You know, and that's, go deeper. Try that. If it's still getting bluefish, try moving. No, yeah, don't worry. It does. This definitely does because this is not in a uh, this is not a stainless spool, so you got to get the WD on it, clean it. You know, it definitely yeah, it definitely little, it requires a little maintenance on it. it. Absolutely does. This is made. Uh, Canyon Reels makes these for Tony. And he puts them. I guess stamps his name, makes it just for him. I guess Tony told him what he wanted. He put a reel together, and that's the reel he's using. <clears throat> yeah, because of corrosion. Like I said, every season. I don't do it all the time. Every season. Like, the beginning of this season, I'll take all this line out. This is still last year's. I never changed it. It's all the same. That's why it looks like crap. And then I'll do is I'll put it on. Like I say, put, it on, I put the clip on something. You can go to a school field, let's just say. Hook around a, the, the uh, football, whatever it is, the, uh, the post. Walk it out. Take a rag. Spray a little WD on it. And then wind it back in. And it'll clean all that wire right up. You'll feel kinks, anything. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. That's fine. Because that, that will take all the salt away, all that corrosion away. And that's what kills your reels is all that salt corrosion. It's sitting there. It doesn't get out. And then when you start letting that line, you'll start seeing the side of your spools. We'll have that white. And it starts getting pitted. And that's, you know, destroys it. I have a Shimano Torium 30 I use. That's on my other rod. I've had that reel now, geez, probably when it first came out, 10, 11, 12 years maybe. Not a problem with it. You know, I take care of it. It has a little bit of pitting on because it's aluminum. There is a little pitting, but it's not bad for the age it is. Works great. High retrieve, get the fishing faster. <clears throat> and um, yeah, no, they work good. The handle's nice. It's a nice reel. Also, what why I forgot to mention is keep your boat in gear. You know, keep it slow, as slow as possible. Of course, with these reels, not so much. You don't have to, but with, say, the Senators, that fish a lot of times will come to you. I don't know if you ever saw that. You reel and also you think you lost it, right? And like, oh, no, he's still there, he's still there. You keep that boat in gear. It keeps more tension on that line so you can keep up with it. Makes it a little harder. If you have two guys, just have a guy in a throttle. Hey, Ralph, bump it again. He's coming closer. You know, you, you talk. Every, be verbal with your, you know, whoever your fishing partner is that day. You could do that. Or if you buy yourself, keep it in gear and just do it. Where I am in Montreal, though, because when you said three miles per hour, that's too fast where I am. That, you're going to get yeah. crazy. I'm down to two. Two, yeah. Like 1.5. Well, there's just a, watch it to tip your rod. It depends. You have a lot yeah, more current. Yeah, I haven't tried the system yet. So I yeah. There's tr so much more current in Montauk than we have over here. Right. So it's going to be different, you know. Sometimes you could probably just, you know, just, just uh, what's the word, stem the current, whatever that word is, hold the current, and the spoon will probably work by itself. And you're just keeping the boat still. And that spoon just whipping because there's so much current over there. You're not worried as much about the speed that you know, it's all about what the rod says. The tip. I do everything by the tip. So no matter what you do, you just try to get that action. Yeah. I'll start at three. Three is where I start. Three, uh, I forget what my GPS is. I don't know if it's three knots. No, it's three knots. I'll start at three knots, and then I'll work from there. If I see that's going too erratic, no good, you know, and then I'll come off a little. If it's not going at all, I'll bump up a little. Also, sometimes you watch a tip, you'll see the tip going like this. No good, your spoon's spinning. And all that's going to catch is bluefish. So, you, like I said, this tells you everything. That rise, that's the key. Just watch it, see what you're doing. You know, if, if you're going, like I said, if it's spinning, it's no good. If you're going too slow, it's just a dead spoon. That's really no good. So just got, you want that nice, solid, the pump. And that's, that's basically what you want, and uh, that's what's going to catch a fish. And then watching your fish find it, see where you're marking these fish. You know, they could be up on the surface. How many times you go out there and you see the fish boiling on the surface? Well, why are you going to be 30 feet down if they're boiling on the surface? Actually, at that point, why are you going to wire troll? Get some poppers out there, <laughs> you know, and get them. Could you replicate the action on the tip of the rod on these You want me to show you the action? Yeah. So when you're trolling now, so basically, just turn it sideways for a second. Yeah, this way. Right, this, there you go. Okay, so that's out. Let's say that's in the out rod right now. So you're trolling. So this is basically what it's going to look like. That's what you want. That steady pump like that. 
That's your spoon whipping back and forth. Now you'll just see like this. That's no good. Or you'll see this. No good. That's your spoon spinning now. So every time that spins, it's, you know, going right through the rod and you'll watch everything. No problem. The speed, yep. Or hung up, or you could have something on the hook. How are you hitting that clock spoon with a freeway on the, on the Yeah, I'll show you. Okay. I put it back in here somewhere. I know I threw it in here somewhere. That's actually a deadly little thing. It works so, so good. It works really, really, really good. So he was asking about the clock spoon. A lot of stuff too, like you go like to other places and you learn from other people and you say, oh, that's pretty cool. This is something that they use in Florida for grouper. <laughs> and then you bring it back home. You say, I'm going to try that over here. And it works. So is Mojo even more popular Yeah. Um, Delaware. I'm not even sure. Do they use them in Jersey? Well, I mean, I can't find them here. I ordered them online. Yeah. From Delaware. Delaware's huge, yeah. I go to the Virginia Beach Bass Pro Shops. It's, it's a whole new world on it. It's crazy, the stuff they have for bass. And it's all, you know, much different stuff than we use. It's all, you know, a lot of rubber shads, a lot of parachute rigs, all different stuff. I'm sure so sure. No, this is my own. I made this. We also have a web. I'll give you guys out some flies. Like, a lot of stuff we do is uh, my partner, Ralph, and I, we do a lot of filming. And we, we basically make all, like, how-to videos just to show everybody and we'll put everything online. Oh, actually, hold on. Okay, so here's your, your diver. This is a 30-foot diver. Right, right. So just hold that right there. So. Oh, you got the clip on there. Yep. Okay. So now, when you're trolling, you can drop that there. This is gonna dive you down. Then you don't need wire for this. This is mono or power pro. This is going to swim. Now that's diving down, and this is going to be following like this. About three feet, five feet? Yeah, that's probably about five feet, this wire right here. I mean, this, uh, this is probably 50 pound fluorocarbon. You could, but you need more line. This is not enough. This is too short. You could do it, though. With the wire? Yeah. No, if you're going to use this, this, this takes up for the wire. This is going to get you down. This will get you down 30 feet, this lure. Because I see the big lip on there. When that catches the water, it just goes. It's like a dipsy dive that the freshwater guys use or a planer board. Do you need a whole different setup than what you used to own? This way you can, use, you can use any rod you want. You can use a bluefish rod for this. Oh, okay. You don't need a spongy rod for this. Oh, I see. This is anything, whatever rod you have. You could use like a pool cue if you want an entire reel to it. It's fine. You're just trolling with this and that's it. It works though. And they like this thing too. Yeah, yeah. It's a deadly little setup. Yeah, speaking about going other places, who knows what this is? Anybody know what that is? Yeah. Who said Alaska? Somebody say Alaska? It's a halibut jig. That's for halibut from Alaska. It works on bass too. <laughs> and it's the same thing. Instead of putting, say, the mojo rig, I'll put this on the bottom. Just a big lead head with a big twirly tail, and you get the bass on this too. And this is something from Alaska. Like, who would think to use this for striped bass? But for extra weight, instead of the mojo, you could throw this on and troll that too. Don't tell my secrets to John. <laughs> Where is John? He's supposed to come here today. Uh, okay. You guys need bucktail. Anybody bucktail fish? Our friend John Baggio, Asgard Jigs, he makes some beautiful, beautiful stuff. Awesome, awesome bucktails. I don't have any because I'm really talking about bucktailing, but it's definitely good. I'm going to give you guys some flyers, too. This is my webpage. You can check it out. You can just hand these out around. That's everybody. Thank you. Are you, uh, are you you're a full-time guy in the service? No, I'm not. A, I actually I just do guide service. Like I'll go on other people's boats, and I'll just show them on their own boat. I'm actually a firefighter for the city. And then I do this, oops, you got that? There you go. Rosedale 314? Oh, you know, Rosedale. Yeah. Uh, you can have that. Take it. Yeah, I'm in Rosedale. You guys got them? Basically, we know we started this page about two years ago, and we're trying to build up more and more. And yeah, yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, we have a YouTube page. Well, with the Hooked Up Network, it's a whole network of just all fishing videos and stuff with them. They're on Facebook, too. <coughs> And basically, we're just trying to build up a whole, like, a whole how-to thing just for this area. You know, for, you know from basically all of Long Island, Connecticut. Now we're going to go journey over to the uh, Sound this year. I'm going to try bunker spoon trolling with Ralph's buddy on the Sound and see how that works. 
and film that. We're going to do downriggers this year. We're going to try that out. <clears throat> Tony does not sell downriggers. No, no. He has the, he has the uh, bungee cord for the downrigger. Uh huh. Oh, get out of here, really? Really? I would think so, yeah. Really? Oh, that's cool. I'm definitely going to try that. So, power pro, and how many pound test is it? Uh, 300 pounds. They make it just for that. Like, so okay. Okay, and also don't use the ball, use Z wings. Z wings, that's the one that's like this, right? It's flat and it comes up. It's, it's uh, the heavier one. And you can just order that online, whatever. And uh, it goes down way further than. Okay. Core. Yeah, like, see, I'm learning from you now because this is new. I never did it before. So, this year we're going to try it out and see how it goes. Did you try the planers? I have tried the planers, yeah. I have, it, I have a rod. They work. They work good, especially, you know, that's something I got from Florida was the plane is we use it for kingfish, and they work great. Yeah, and if it doesn't snap, forget about it. <laughs> it's like you're fighting a fish. I made a plane of rods. I took a broken rod. It's probably about this big. I just throw it on there. I have the plane. I put a regular clip with the, uh, like the orange rubber on the inside. You ever see those clips, the down regular clips? Pop that on there. So what we do is I'll put it on, drop the plane down, and hopefully when that fish hits, it pops. If it doesn't pop it, you fight the fish and you just got to reel in the planer right. and start from over. So it's a little bit of work, but it works. It definitely works, the planer. Yeah, it works. And it's got a 4 center on it. And it's fine. It works great. A lot of pressure. When you use a planer, tremendous amount of pressure on the rod itself. <clears throat> so you can't use anything flimsy. You're going to pop it. Super, super pressure. Any other questions? I think he's going to be coming in soon. He wanted me to stop. In about, probably about five minutes left I have because he's going to stop putting the auction, I guess, in here. There's an auction coming on afterwards. What's that? Oh, I think he said he was putting it in here. So he wanted me to get done. Whatever. When he chases me out, he chases me out. Okay. Anybody has any other questions? Well, that's basically it then. So the whole thing is, like I said, just, just to go over real quick, is everything is in that rod tip. Watch that rod. If you get the rods, like I said, try to, the main thing is don't just go to a store and buy some, especially in the winter. Wait till you see some on sale. Look and go out and get it. You go to all these stores. J&H has a lot of sales out east. You can find out and you see. You go online too and get them from uh, Tony's website if you needed this rod. Well, okay. Any rod you need. God bless you. That's basically it. And the belt. Don't forget the belt. <laughs> the belt will save the day. I'm big. I'm 280 pounds. I still use the belt, so. You know, it makes a big difference when you're fighting a fish. I'm trying to think of anything else I could touch on. Did I miss anything? <laughs> Can't think of anything else. Just the weights, the four ounce weights. We talked about that. Leave the boat in gear. Yeah, you don't have to set the hook. When you hook a fish, don't grab it and start setting it. The rod does it. There's no stretch and wire. So the second that fish bites it, he's hooked. Are you into the yeah, absolutely. You sit right there. That yeah. We're partners in the web page, my buddy Ralph and I. Yeah, yeah. Maja, yeah. Maha, Maja. <laughs> we can do whatever you need. Two, that's it. Don't go more than that. Yeah, you'll see guys go with third. They'll put a, a diver in the middle. And a lot of times they use these divers. This one. These, these things are temperamental, these, these diving plugs. You have to be right at that right speed. <laughs> right. So say you, <laughs> that's right. So you have the two rods out right now. You run this thing down the middle. If you're at the right speed, he's fine. If you go with the, something a little bit off, he'll go this way. He'll start swimming. He's wrapping that wire. And he'll shoot the other way. Now he's wrapping that wire. And it screws everything. It's really not worth it. If you want to be adventurous, yeah, buy, go ahead. But uh, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> you definitely would. <laughs> yeah, autopilot's good. Absolutely, you could do it on autopilot. Because autopilot's going to keep compensating and bring it back. No, he's running easy in. These things work good, but if I was using these, I would do two of these. And if I'm doing the spoons, two spoons. <clears throat> umbrella rig, you could, you could mix and match umbrella rig with a spoon. That you could do. Just do, don't worry about the umbrella rig speed, worry about the spoon speed though. So the umbrella rig's in the water, fine, forget about it, watch a spoon. 
you know, because the rotor's gonna catch fish no matter what, what you're doing, it's gonna catch fish. All this is being dragged through the water, there's nothing else happening. So whatever it is, it is. But watch the tip of that rod. When that spoon's working, set your speed, get an eye on your speed, and watch. But now it's, you're going, say, to the east, right? And you got that speed. Now when you come back to the west, you're gonna be at a different speed now. Because now you might be going with the current, against the current, cross, whatever it may be, your speed's probably gonna be different. When, right. <clears throat> Every, it always different. But the best, 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 best way, I don't care what he says, to troll spoons is cross current. Cross it. Just keep going. Back. See, for us, it's going across the beach, let's say. I'll head north, come to the beach, come to about 25 feet of water, spin around, go back out to 45 feet of water, and just keep going and doing that. That's your best way to do it. Go over some structure, which is, works really good. Um, watch your depth as you're coming in shallow water, cranking some line so you don't get your stuff snagged up on the bottom. You fish Montauk, you said? Ton of structure down there. Tons of muscle beds, tons of rocks. You know, you're too deep, you're gonna lose your spoons and there goes your profit for your charter and you start dropping spoons. <laughs>